Hi guys, this is Rich with Wild Wonderful Weekends, and I wanted to make a video today to talk about my first experience with PIX4D Scan and PIX4D Inspect. I wanted to talk specifically about how these two software offerings work together to allow you to deliver high quality 3D models or digital twins to your clients. Uh, typically when I fly an industrial inspection mission, I do it manually after coming up with a flight plan with the client and figuring out exactly what it is they want to put their attention on. Then I'll get the drone in the air and I'll take the images or video or thermal data, whatever the job calls for, and I turn that over to the client. And that typically works really well. But if you take a lot of images of the same object, especially if there are a lot of close-ups, they can be a little overwhelming because they all look the same. And that's where digital twins and 3D models come in. Uh, it allows the client to look at their model in an environmental context. They can pan and zoom and take measurements. And if there's a particular feature on their uh, asset that they want to look at, they can click that and see the images that went into comprising that part of the model and get a whole lot more detail. So it's pretty neat. Um, I've flown a couple missions manually trying to make those digital twins, and they've come out okay. They've uh, definitely given the client more context than just regular images, but they have been a little low res and a little rough. So when I heard about PIX4D Scan, I was pretty excited. I wanted to give it a try. It's a mission planning and mission flight app that's specifically designed for capturing images that are going to be used to make a 3D model. And on the back end side of that, PIX4D Inspect takes those images and applies a lot of artificial intelligence to make really smooth 3D models for your client. So uh, let me go ahead and show you what I learned. To test things out, I chose a cell tower near my home. I launched PIX4D Scan and made sure it was connected to my Phantom 4 Pro, which is indicated on the left of the screen. And you can, of course, choose from a whole list of available drones by clicking the drop-down arrow. You'll notice that a map appears. For some missions, you'll need to plan them using a map, but for simple vertical structures and cell towers, you don't need to use the map to plan the mission. If you are planning a mission that requires a map, you'll need to have an internet connection for that part of it. To get started, just tap Start Flight. A fairly standard interface loads onto the screen. Along the left of the screen you see speed, distance from home point, height, and gimbal pitch. And along the top of the screen you can see battery info for both the drone and controller, SD memory card, and satellite locks. Along the bottom are camera settings. To start planning this mission I'm going to tap the plus icon on the right of the screen. And straight away you start to see this is a pretty sophisticated drone flight app, allowing us to choose from several different types of inspection missions. I'm here to test it against a cell tower, so that's what I choose. Next we're taken through several steps that walk us through exactly what we'll need to do in order to fly the mission with the greatest success. The first thing we're told is to ensure we have a strong GPS satellite signal. This is always a little tricky where I usually operate because of the hills and tall trees, but my drone is locked on to about 12 satellites at the moment, so that's pretty good. The second thing described is how to define the flight area by marking the lowest point of the cell tower and the highest point. The next screen details what the best types of flight paths to use are depending on the desired output. In this case I want a 3D model of the tower so it looks like I'm going to be choosing the helix flight path. This screen gives more tips for getting the best results including setting the camera for the correct exposure and light balance and using recommended mission and mission settings so the AI and the software can build the best reconstruction. I won't read all of this to you line by line, but I'm pretty impressed with how thorough it is so far. Now, notice that on tip number 7 it says, for reconstruction fly one helix, one cylinder, and several orbits. So earlier, in step 3, it said for 3D models the helix flight path is preferred to the cylinder flight path. But now it looks like we can choose more than one flight path for making a digital twin. We'll see as we go forward. I tap Done, and we're taken back to the Flight app but a question is presented to us asking if the drone is at the same elevation as the lowest point of the cell tower. And it is, roughly. But I don't want to leave anything to chance, and I really don't want the drone flying too low here anyway because of nearby obstacles. So I'm going to tap no, and hopefully I'll be prompted to set the lowest point manually. And yes, it looks like the first thing I'll be asked to do is set the lowest point of the cell tower. There's a green crosshair on the screen to help us set it precisely, and the camera angle is set to zero degrees. This is an optional step, but I'm going to set it anyway. To do this, I launch the drone and fly it to the point I want to set as the lowest point on the cell tower, which I'll set just above the trees here. I tap next to record it, 
and then we're asked to set the cell tower center point. And check out that little animated graphic showing us exactly what to do. Also note that the camera angle reading now is displayed in red, letting me know that zero degrees is not an acceptable angle to set the parameter. Once the drone's over the tower and the gimbal angle is set to negative 90 degrees, the reading turns green. This program uses this visual cue throughout. If a parameter setting's out of range, it's red, and once it's in range, it's green. Setting the center point's always a little challenging. There's wind and interference from the radio tower, so the drone always seems to drift a little. Just do the best you can and be as accurate as possible. Once I have it about where I want it, I tap next to record it. Finally, we're asked to set the cell tower's highest point. I move my drone into position per the instructions on screen and tap next to record it. Next, I'm presented with two main types of missions, 3D models or visual inspections. Depending on which I select, I get a list of flight paths I can choose from. I'm also able to redefine the cell tower center, lowest point, and highest point if I feel I need to. I tap Helix to select it, then tap Next. Now I'm presented with more settings I can adjust. I'm not shooting under the best lighting conditions for creating 3D models today. It's mostly cloudy, but the sun is breaking through occasionally, and it's midday, so when that happens, the shadows are harsh. I'll go ahead and choose cloudy, then accept the other default settings since that was what the instructions recommended earlier. The mission uploads to the drone, starts executing. The garbled video feed is from the cell tower interference. So far so good, but notice the tower isn't always in the center of the frame, so I'll be very curious to see how the final product turns out. I'll admit that there were also times that the drone seemed like it was getting too close to the tower, and at one point I was convinced it might even hit an antenna, so I paused the mission. Because even though the camera's pointing downward in this view, the drone itself was very close to the antenna, or so it seemed from my vantage point. I didn't have a visual observer with me on this test flight, so I had to walk around a bit to confirm it was safe. Once I was satisfied, I resumed the mission. But the drone didn't just resume from where it was, it changed position and started flying again. Once that mission completed, I selected orbit. I kept the lighting conditions at cloudy. I noticed that the height reading was in orange but I went ahead and tapped Start Mission because I figured the software would remember the parameters I set earlier for highest point and lowest point. I received a low mission height warning, and I hit Start Mission anyway, just to see what it would do. And sure enough, I got a very nice orbit of nothing interesting. This made sense once I thought about it, since it's recommended that you fly more than one orbit. Those orbits can be, and should be, at different heights, which of course the pilot would need to define. Now it was time for a quick battery change. With the drone back in the air, I cruised out to the height I wanted to fly a more useful orbit I set a valid gimbal pitch and tapped Start Mission. Now I didn't reset any of the other parameters like the center of the cell tower and I felt like the orbit was a little off center. You can see here how the antenna cluster was rarely in the center of the frame. So before starting the cylinder flight path, I reset the center of the cell tower. I changed a couple of the other parameters from the defaults, just to see how it would behave. 
and started the mission. And even though I reset the center of the cell tower, the drones seemed to get sideways again. But this is just a test, so I let it be, and we'll see how the final result turns out. I skipped the single vertical flight path and let that be that. Back home now, I go to the PIX4D Inspect Cloud Portal and log in. I'm presented with an interface that looks a lot like the interface of PIX4D Scan, displaying a map. Along the left of the screen are demo projects I can view. I click on Start Free Trial in the upper right part of the screen, then I click Log In. And now in the left part of the screen, I can toggle between User and Demo. Just to the right of that box is a plus sign. I click that, and then click New Project. This is where I can upload the photos from the drone's SD card, and that's exactly what I do. The photos are listed, and a small map shows the location of each capture. The next screen lets us define some project data, like asset name and the project name and date. And the last screen lets us choose which type of digital product we want. In this case, I keep the default selection for Intelligent Digital Twin. We're prompted to accept sharing our project data with PIX4D, and I do. Now I can see my project's upload progress in the lower right of the screen, and in the left part of the screen I see my project listed under User. Once all of the photos are uploaded, the status bar in the right of the screen turns green and informs us that processing has started. How much time it takes for PIX4D Inspect to process your data will depend on the number of photos you submit. My project came in at just under two hours. To view the final product, click the asset name under the project node. The digital twin loads along with an image gallery and viewer. Right away I'm impressed with how good the model looks, especially considering how off-center the images sometimes were during capture. I also noticed that the AI did an excellent job of tagging assets like antenna and knocking out unnecessary background clutter from the environment. Just clicking around, it looks like there are some automatic reporting features. And again, this isn't going to be an in-depth investigation into all of the capabilities of PIX4D Inspect. I just wanted to get an idea of its ability to create quality 3D models with as little effort as possible. And in that regard, I think it did a stellar job, especially considering I only flew one orbit around the antenna array. As you might expect, if you click an area on the model, the images update in the image gallery so that the photos associated with the selected part of the model are displayed. You can select an image from the gallery, then zoom and pan on that selected image in the viewer. From the icons on the left, you can turn the camera views on and off, as well as adjust their opacity. Selecting a camera icon from the main view will update the image gallery to show the image taken from that selected perspective. One thing I thought was really cool is if you click the inventory icon on the left of the screen, it already has nodes for the antenna, the AI identified, as well as the boxes. These can be selected by clicking the node, then that asset is highlighted on the model and the image gallery is updated. Clicking the icon on the left of the screen under the camera icon, the one that looks like a gear with a play button on it, 
will allow you to adjust the visibility of the 3D model, the image map, and elevation map. And clicking the very bottom icon on the left of the screen gives you the option to download assets like the input images, the 3D model, the image map, and elevation map. And it looks like the 3D model downloads as an LAS point cloud data file. I notice, like most mapping and modeling software, the tools in the upper right of the model view allow you to select points on the model, take linear and area measurements, and inspect parts of the model. I won't go through each of those since they're pretty self-explanatory. So all in all, I think Pix4D Scan paired with Pix4D Inspect is a really powerful combo for creating digital twins for inspections. Just to give a little contrast and comparison, I uploaded the same photos from this cell tower flight into Measure Ground Control and processed those images using their Pix4D Lite engine. And you can see there's a very noticeable difference. First, the background objects remain in the model, and without the AI particular to Pix4D Inspect, the model is much rougher and none of the components are automatically recognized or tagged. This may not be a huge deal if all you're aiming to provide is a model that the client can gain context from and select points on that model to view the comprising images in greater detail. But it seems to me that you get a lot more bang for your buck for the $60 per project price tag, which is what Pix4D currently charges for the use of Pix4D Scan and Pix4D Inspect. So that's it guys. Uh, like I said, that was my first experience with Pix4D Scan and Pix4D Inspect and I was really impressed. I think you get a lot for your money, uh, especially considering how easy it is to plan the mission, to fly the mission, to capture the assets and to process it. And when you consider how the AI actually identifies and tags some of the components of your model right off the bat, I think it's a good deal. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. If so, please like and subscribe and fly safe.